Hi, welcome to Quirky Queen's Journals. My name's Kirsten. So today we're making abstract art on the jelly plate, but we're only using two colours plus white. So we're making a lovely purple using Alizarian red and thalo green. I did discover this by chance. <laughs> um, it's an absolute wonderful colour, but I found that actually mixing the colours to create the colour brings so much more depth and interest because there's these little nuances where there's slightly more green and there's slightly more red in the purple and it I think these two colours in particular do make such a wonderful colour, you know, and that probably these two I think it's likely they maybe give more than mixing two other colours do. There may be one that do have a lot of differences in them. But it, they're just really lovely. So another thing that I'm doing, after going on about colours for a whole minute, <laughs> is um, I'm actually repeating layers because when... You know, when you're using the gel plate, there's always kind of white spaces left. And there's two layers on that, and yet we've still got white spaces. Now, that is 300 GSM um, watercolour paper. So it's also got a bit of texture in it, which doesn't help. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm actually trying to register the gel plate, basically line it up. So this is a sheet of mylar that I make stencils out of and it's quite sticky on the back of the gel plate. So what I've done is I've sat the gel plate on top of where it should meet the paper and then I've lined up the edge of the mylar to be in line with the paper. So I can put the paper down measuring up the corners with that piece of mylar. Now you could just use... Um, another piece of paper just the mylar sticks really well to the back of the gel plate people also use acrylic plates you can you know put a corner on use something like two rulers at the side or something just something to help line it up um but this was my way of doing it because i hadn't done it from the start so we're still building that base color with these slight variations in the ratio of red and green um, to create a very similar purple each time. Um, I'm using a sort of few pa pieces of paper scrunched together to create a kind of ball here just to put some um, texture into the paint but also it means that the opacity of this paint going on here will vary in different areas. So this is very subtle. It doesn't necessarily show up very much. You can see it very slightly there. You can also see that the white patches tend to be staying in the same area of the paper. And I don't know, that could be on the gel plate itself. I could have a sort of a wee dent in it maybe or it could be the way I roll out it could be lots of different things so what I'm doing now is I've added in white and oh this colour is magical it really is it's like velvet so um, and the reason I'd put you put the little gel plate on top of the big gel plate was I had leftover paint on it and I wanted to get it off the gel plate, the wee gel plate onto the big gel plate a bit more easily than trying to keep braiding on and it was starting to dry. <laughs> so this time what I'm using is this is just one sheet of paper scrunched up. So the edges are more crisp and you can see there that although I've used the same technique and the same items just using one instead of a ball of them, gave a bit of a different look. I really like that. <laughs> and I'm just pointing out that that part of the gel plate 
and the white bit in the paper, there's something going on there, they're not meeting. So this time, I'm using just a thick, dark layer, and I was just taking off a bit with another sheet of paper. Now, that was a book page, a glossy book page, and it already had black acrylic paint on it. So when there was already that dried acrylic paint on it, it will reject some of the paint that's on the plate, so it would only take off a very slight amount. So, I think we're getting rid of the white now. It is starting to go. I've stopped showing you me mixing the colours because that was just um, red and green with white and it's always going to be that with or without the addition of white. Now that was also another piece of paper but I moved a lot faster and what I did was I actually replaced the paper a few times during it. So that's the background looking really really good. So now I have made some stencils just out of a plastic folder that you would keep papers in. Um, quite a flimsy plastic. I've just, I basically cut out a big circle and then I cut out hoops from that circle. So this is one big circle that's just had hoops and one tiny circle from the middle that I will use to create the shapes on this painting. I just love this. Do you know, it's very unusual that you would see, see hints of green in a purple. And I think that's what I like about this. Because it's unexpected. It was unexpected to me to mix green and red and get purple. So <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure the green would be unexpected to other people. I hope it makes it interesting. There must just be the right amount of blue, red and yellow and that phthalo green and alizarin red. So if I were to put all these together, you know, before they were, basically they're just, they would all make one big circle if I laid them all together. I hope that makes sense. There's five in total. And I'm just deciding where to, to, to place them. But I thought it was important to, to maybe leave more of this in to show you that a lot of these processes aren't just bang, bang, bang. I sit and I, I, um, I think about it and I stare at it a lot. And I move things about a lot and I put paint over things I'm not supposed to. <laughs> what I was doing my, when I was laying these stencils out, I obviously want a nice strong composition. But I also want the space within all of these hoops and that circle. I want that to show. So I don't want, I want there to be gaps. That's what I'm trying to say. Most of these as well, um, they didn't stay down for more than a minute. You know, these pulls, they did take quite easily. Um, I think it's the type of paper, the weather conditions yesterday. Just maybe as well the fact is that I'm using these same colours over and over as well. So this time I'm just using the phthalo green and the alizarin red without any white in it and I'm going to lift those stencils off the plate once I've put this out and I think it's the best I've ever seen on the gel plate. The, the shapes and the combination of these colours, wait until you see it, it's beautiful. I'm going to start mixing my colours a lot more because I just feel that they look spectacular. And I think as well, see, because those stencils are so thin, they've left, it's almost like pencil marks. That's what it looks like around the shapes. 
I would say this is more luck than skill. That's just the gel plate for you because I didn't plan for that. I know it doesn't look as good as it did in the gel plate, but we have to build it up. Now, fortunately for me, the marks of where the stencils had been have been left on the gel plate because I did not forward think to this stage about replacing the stencils again. And I'm just showing you how difficult it was trying to find where they were originally because these are not true circles these are wonky circles so there's thinner and thicker parts i mean anybody with a bit of sense would have used the light blue marks on that stencil to work out where it should have went but it took me a while to <laughs> to make to make that um, logical decision So yeah, so now I'm aware of this, I need to really think about how I'm going to move forward because I know that those circles need, they need more defined, the gaps in, in between the hoops need more definition. So I need to think about how I'm going to um, make sure that I know where to put them back down again. It's quite tricky, I'm just showing you how tricky it was. I don't know if anybody here watched The Krypton Factor, but I feel like this is what this is like. That was a game show from the 80s. On YouTube. TV. Now, one thing I will say is I can't work out what the ratio is that makes it more dark. I think that when the green and the red, one of them is more apparent. There's more of one of them, that's when it comes across as darker. So I think either one of them could be more, if that makes sense. As long as there's a bigger amount of one of those colours, it makes it darker. That's, that's my theory. So this does give quite a good um, coverage over the base layer. And I was just lucky that I did have some marks left on the gel plate that helped me replace those stencils again. So you can see there that the gaps are starting to, you know, be really defined from the hoops. I just love, I think that the, the sort of, they're not pencil marks, but they look like pencil marks. I think those parts are my favourite part of the whole thing. <laughs> that and the fact there's green and the purple. So I'm sure this is just a repetition and it's the last base layer. Sometimes when I watch printmaking um, videos and, you know, they put them through the big press and it's proper professional printmaking. And I thought to myself, do you know, they don't have the white spots that you quite often get with the gel plate. The gel plate gives a more rustic look to it. And I thought, I wonder what I can do to try and achieve that more finished polished look to it and that's why I've done a lot of repetition here so obviously it's not flawless <laughs> but I do think it has a richness and a depth to it which um is it happens less commonly and um, when I'm using the gel plate so I was happy with that so I've got another stencil made from that same plastic file folder. And what I'm doing here is I'm trying to measure up on the gel plate where I want this to sit. Because 
with the way the hoops are positioned on the picture, I want to make sure that I've got this in a place where it doesn't look like it still shows the gaps in the hoops. I've obviously used a lot more green this time as well. There we go. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting lots of paper around to pull up what's not under the stencil. And I'm just making sure that stencil's pressed down. You can see that paint starting to dry already. The fact some of it came back up with the brayer. Now this is, uh, I think it's, it's like a, it's either a wax thread or string or elastic. And what I've done is I've tied sort of loops and knots into it. And then I've just scrunched it together and it's given me those lovely marks through the circles. So I'm going to use baby oil and a tissue and I'm going to take all the excess away that we don't want on this plate. Oh, if I ruined that base layer, I'd be devastated <laughs> after all that work. The baby oil with the tissue makes it very easy to remove it when it's dry. And then I have a paint guard and it cost £3. That's how much they cost. You could use a ruler and I use it to make a sharp edge. But that paint had dried. So I've put this alizarin red and white mixture over the top because it's not going to come off the gel plate otherwise. And then I go in with the paint guard. <laughs> A lot of this is quite, um, while I have the, you have the ideas before you start, you do have to sort of make amendments along the way and you come across problems that you think to yourself, oh, I never foreseen that. Like, for example, when you're having to remove paint with paper and then clean up the gel plate with baby oil and tissue, it's reasonable to expect your paint's going to dry. So, unfortunately, I missed that bit of the video. All I've done here is, once I'd lifted that green and pink off, I've put some white paint over that place. Now, these are bookmarks, and what I've done is I had some thick acrylic paint, and I've just put some... I've made little stamps... Now, you can only use these a few times before the acrylic paint builds up, build up, stops the lines of acrylic paint making marks. But I like the way that the marks were made with the acrylic paint. It's different than using the stencil. It's good to have lots of variety because the variety is what makes things interesting, I think. So that's that's looking um it's looking untidy. So now what I'm trying to do is kind of tidy it up a bit. Also, I think the green and the pink are just although it's obviously made from the thalo green and the alizarin red, they just don't sit right on the picture. I think that the it's with the white, the amount of white that I used with them. So that stencil's left some lovely marks in that white paint. And I'm just doing what I did before and taking off the excess paint that's not needed. There's a lot of prep involved with kind of the more finer detail work, but it's worth it. I really like the way that stencil, I think that the thinness of those stencils and maybe the material they're made from, there's something about the sharpness of the edges of the shapes that I really, really like. You don't get that same thin line around the shapes 
with other stencils that I've used. I'm going to need to invest in these plastic file folders. Now all I'm doing here is mixing the paint on the gel plate and then I'll remove it. And this is, I'm putting a coating of this purple over that stencil shape to lift it onto, to put it onto the painting. But I'm going to use quite a thick layer <laughs> so it doesn't dry out. Give me time to tidy up the edges and the gel plate. And I've also tried to not completely blend it together. So there's quite a, a mix there. There's flashes of green and red still showing through. And even white. And I like that. I did feel I should have lifted that with paper rather than wash it off with the baby oil in the tissue. But I was more I was more concerned about the picture at that point <laughs> than saving paint. So this, oh, I love this now. It looks really good, but it's there's too much of it at the underneath those smaller circles. So what I'm doing now is I've put the baby oil on to the gel plate to clean it up. And this is white fluid acrylic paint. And what's happened is the baby oil creates a resist. So holes start appearing in that white and I was like well that's ideal and it's also kind of graduated at, at one side so I'm making a sharp edge at one end and kept, kept it graduated at the other I don't want this to be a feature I just want this to polish up the circle stencil, the stencil, the, the rectangle of circle stencil that I used. <laughs> that literally took like 15 seconds to go onto the gel plate. But do you see there the difference that's made? But it's a bit stark. So now this is Thalo Green Fluid Acrylic Paint. And I just do the exact same thing. Tidy it up at one side and then this will sit over the white. And again, this comes up very fast. So the alizarin red I only have in heavy body. So the you don't get the same holes appearing and also it doesn't graduate the same way. So I have to kind of use the tissue paper to help a bit make it less harsh of a line at that side. I also should have took off the top of that line as well, and I didn't. But anyway, the, here it is. This is the finished picture. Oh, and I'm so happy with it. So I'm going to get myself some mixed media flat paper with no texture to do this again. And Alizarin in red and Thalo green are my new favourite colour combination. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and take care and I hope to see you soon. Bye.